What's up guys, Derek from moreplaysmoredates.com. Today we're going to be talking about the correlation between strength and size. So, you know, there is a very common saying and it's uh, a bigger muscle is a stronger muscle. And I don't know where that originated from. I don't know where I heard it myself, but you know, it's been passed down through the grapevine sort of over the years. And a lot of people, they think, uh, you know, obviously progressive overload is extremely important and it's a necessity for exerting more stimulus on your muscles so then you're always uncomfortable and continuously adapting to you know get stronger and get bigger to accommodate that increased workload you're exerting upon yourself so i'm not saying that progressive overload isn't important but one thing i've come to notice over the years is uh most bodybuilders when they're on camera or they're trying to do something impressive they might lift you know a decent amount of weight but typically when they're in the gym by themselves actually doing their real working out you know their actual training sessions and it's not for show or like a youtube video or something they're just going for mind muscle connection and getting a ridiculous pump and they're just they're it's not like they're lifting light but relative to what you know maybe a guy with uh you know who weighs the same who's in strongman competitions and stuff or is training specifically for strength or cares a lot about strength, you see these bodybuilders lifting a lot lighter than those guys. So you might have like, you know, a power lifter guy doing five, six plates on the deadlifts. And then you have a bodybuilder who could probably do five or six plates if he wanted to, but, or he could work up to that fairly easily, but with the amount of drugs he's on and his genetic response, but he's just going for mind muscle connection and doing like, three to four plates or something i've come to realize over the years that um strength doesn't always equate to size in my opinion and like obviously the bigger you get typically the stronger you get along with it but i think a lot of it has to do with your fast twitch muscle fibers and you training that style of training for a long period of time because once i stopped going for insane strength numbers and like prs and stuff your strength can just like dwindle like that even if you have the same amount of muscle mass like i have a video on my instagram of me when i was like 20 years old um deadlifting 575 or something like that it was like almost 600 pounds and i did it for three reps and i was like i had like 30 pounds less muscle on me at that point than i do now and if i tried that weight now i would get destructed and it's just be the reason is because I haven't trained, I don't train for strength necessarily anymore. I progressively overload as the weight becomes too light that I'm using for that mind-muscle connection and getting that really good pump. So I still go heavy, but I don't go for like brute force like reps of like, you know, max out sessions of one, two, three reps per set. You know what I mean? And I'm sure I could probably work my way back up to that five and a half plate deadlift if I wanted to over the course of 2018 if I started strictly focusing on that but it's like my muscle fibers have adapted to this type of training so now doing that explosive max out kind of stuff I would get killed if I tried it now and you know I still gain tons of muscle since that time even though I'm lifting way lighter than I was now and it's just because from a hypertrophy standpoint what I'm doing now is more beneficial than what I was doing then and so, you know, I think to an extent, you have to kind of incorporate both. I'm not saying that training for strength is stupid. Obviously, I think progressive overload is very important, like I mentioned already. But as far as it being like strength being the only determinant, if you get big or not, I've heard some people, they seem to think that, oh, well, if you bench, you know, four plates, for example, there's no way you can have a ridiculous chest. And... I've proved, I've proved that that's not the case because my chest is horrible and I've worked my way up to a four plate bench. And when you see these guys that are, uh, you know, competing in the strongman competitions and stuff, like uh, that Larry Wheels guy is a perfect example because he just competed in bodybuilding. And you'll notice even though his lifts are like extraordinarily out of this world better than everyone else that competes in bodybuilding, his muscular development is not even close to a lot of the pro bodybuilders who are lifting half the weight he is and couldn't even touch what he does. So 
I don't think it's always, you know, don't get caught up too much in the weight is pretty much what I'm trying to say. Don't blow something out or injure yourself trying to get to like a five plate bench because you think that's the only way you're going to get, you know, whatever kind of size you're trying to achieve. So train smart, go for mind muscle connection, get a good pump, stretch the fascia, incorporate progressive overload and use heavy weights relative to your workload relative to what you can handle but don't don't get caught up in thinking it's like i need to hit a 405 bench or i need to hit a six plate deadlift because so and so does it and he's you know this this you know successful or whatever anyways strength isn't everything progressive overload is very important keep that in mind still but don't get too caught up in the numbers and busting prs all the time anyways Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplatesmoredates.com. Subscribe there. Talk to you guys soon.